Hi everybody, Cynthia here. I'm back to share a new series with you that I'm starting called Tags, Bags, Boxes, and Bows. And basically, self-explanatory, I'm going to be making all different types of uh, gift tags, boxes, whether it be nice size gift boxes, little tiny treat boxes, um, bags, I'm going to be making bags, decorating bags, I like to buy a lot of um, like little gift bags like this and then decorate them. So I'll just share with you uh, how I decorate them when I do. Let me see what I do. Tags, boxes, bags, and um, different types of gift bows. And this, I'm also still continuing with my craft show series, so don't worry about that. I have something coming up for that soon. But um, this year my husband and I are hosting Thanksgiving dinner and I wanted to make some favors for the table and came up with this little guy. He is a candy favor and it houses a Ferrero, Ferrero Rocher, is that how you say it? It's perfect size for that, if y'all can see right in there in the box and this is what the front looks like top view and the side so I'm making a few of these for my Thanksgiving table and I thought I would share with you how I made it so let's get started I used uh, for the ribbon here it's like a gingham fall ribbon of cream and orange and that was from Celebrate It. It was called Harvest. I got it last year and I ran out doing this, these actual boxes because I've made three of them so far. Just need one more and that's it for the ribbon but that's where I got that. And then for this cluster here, Sentiment Cluster, the leaf and the gather here came from the Ms. Sparkle and Company stamp set. I used this leaf and the sentiment. And this is from the $1.99 bin at Joann's. Okay, so I used that and then I used my Martha Stewart um, pumpkin punch. And I just punched it out with orange cornstalk. And then I used an orange marker to kind of make a little bit of stripes on the pumpkin and then green for the stem. So that's how I made my sentiment cluster and then I made my bow and the bow I used nine inches of ribbon for that and then you'll see on the scallop circle part here I used some of the Studio G gold glitter glue. I love this stuff and if you can't find that at the craft stores I find a lot of it at Walmart and for the basket weave you guys can see on the scallop here the basket weave I used my basket weave embossing folder from Cuddlebug and that was called Oxford pretty sure yes so that's what I used for that and then my scallop circle to create those I used the classic scallop circles large and I didn't use the smallest, I used the second one in. In this size, if you don't have these dies, you just need to cut your scallop circle at two and a quarter inches around. Like on your crickets or your silhouettes, whatever cutting machine you use. So you're going to need two scallop circles measuring two and a quarter. You're going to need a sheet of cardstock to create your box that's three and a half by three and a half square. I'm just using, like I said, I I glued together my little sentiment cluster here. I've already made my bow. I have my scallops, and this one I've already put on each of the the round pieces. I already glittered those up, and I cut it. I'll show you how I cut it. And then for your handle here, you'll need a piece that measures three inches by a half inch wide. 
Okay, so let's set that aside and we'll start with the box part first. So I put it in my scoreboard or you can also put it in your cutter and use a bone folder. And you're gonna score the three and a half by three and a half inch square at one inch on all four sides. And it should look like that. Okay, let me put my scoreboard aside here. And then I'm going to fold up on all of my score lines. You could use other candies, but I had these Ferrero Rocher laying around. And I thought, hmm, I'm going to try and make a box that fits it. And these fit kind of kind of perfect in here. A little bit loose and that's why I decided to add some of this crinkle paper. And to create the crinkle paper I just took some of my scraps that I had laying around and I used my pinking shears and I cut myself, myself some skinny strips and then I just took it and I kind of rubbed, you know, rolled it in my hand and crinkled it up and that's it. Just that's how I created that. Okay, so anyway, after you fold on all your score lines, you're going to cut up. And here's your corner piece. You're going to cut up on this line to meet up with the next line, but you're not going to cut that off. You're just going to cut up and kind of create some flaps here and then turn it around and do the same on this side cut up to meet the score line up here and you should have four corner flaps and I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid glue and on the, four, on the corner here I'm going to put some glue and on this corner and then I'm just going to fold up my sides and fold this flap up. Same thing on this side. These two pieces are the two flaps here. I'm going to add some liquid glue. Fold those in and fold this up. Okay, so now you got yourself a nice little square box. And I'm going to use my bone folder to kind of push down on that just to make sure they're nice and sealed. And then we have our scallop circle. This is the two and a quarter that I've already embossed with my embossing folder. And this front piece I've already cut. But I'm going to show you how I cut this one. So basically there's two round pieces here. All the round scallops. You're going to count two. Then you're going to go into four and then six. And on the six scallop, you're going to cut straight across. So basically you cut six bumps. One, two, three, four, five, six. You cut six of them off. So you get the straight edge here. And I'm going to add some glue to my box. I'm going to lay it flat. And I'm just going to bump this up against the edge and turn it around and make sure it's centered on both sides. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Add some liquid glue. And I'm going to butt this up against. And then before I really push it in, I'm going to put my two fingers on each side. And I'm going to make sure it's balanced with the back of my box. And then I'm going to run my bone folder in there. 
and then I'm going to take my handle just kind of give it a little curl there run some liquid glue on both of the outside edges but I'm going to center them and put them on the inside and try and center it on top here and then right in this area I'm going to add my bow put a little bit of hot glue on the back And then I'm going to add my bow right here at the base of the handle. And then on the back of my cluster, I added two foam pieces to give it some dimension. And I'm just going to kind of decide where I want to set that because I still want to see some of this box showing through. Just kind of play around with it where I want it and then push it on. Get some of those glue strings out of the way. And then I'm going to take my Ferrero Rocher candy and stick that right in there. And then I'm going to add some of these little pieces of paper, crumpled papers. That's why I like to save my scraps too because I use them for things like this. Now you can buy bags of this stuff at the Dollar Tree, you know, that's inexpensive, but I like to create my own unless I have to do an abundant amount, then I just take my scraps and put them in my paper shredder and shred them up that way. And that way I'm not throwing out my scraps and wasting my paper. And that's it guys. Those are our little favor boxes. Well, my little favor boxes for my Thanksgiving table. You guys could decorate yours however you'd like. I just thought I'd share how I made mine. And I hope you guys have fun making yours. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. And I will be back to share my next box for my Thanksgiving table. This one's a treat box. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek because I think it looks super cute next to my favorite box. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.